Okay, so let's begin with this video tutorial. And some of you might recognize this theme because I've used this theme for pretty much most of the WordPress tutorials that I've done. And if you haven't yet seen them, you can go on my YouTube channel at Ready the Brand and have a look at the WordPress section. I have all sorts of useful WordPress development tutorials there. So anyways, this is the theme that we'll be using, but the theme is not so important for this tutorial. You can use it on any theme. Uh, the code that we will be writing, you can use on any theme that you like. So as you can see, I'm already logged in as an admin and I'm just going to navigate to the dashboard. As you can see, I don't have any of the default boxes in here. And this is because I've actually turned them off from the screen options. Uh, they are all unticked, but of course you can tick them and display them. And this is what we'll be doing today. We will be creating a custom box for the dashboard. So let's have a look at how we can do that. First of all, open your project in your favorite code editor. And for me, this is Visual Studio Code. And I've zoomed in quite a lot so you can see a little bit better. So the file that I'm looking for is functions.php. So let's open that. And usually functions.php will be full with settings for the theme, but uh, don't worry about all those, all that. We just can be writing the new code underneath all this. So let's just make some space for the new code. And I'm, and I'm going to close the Explorer for now so it doesn't get in the way. And let's start writing our custom dashboard widget. So first of all, let me name it quickly. Just put a comment here so we know what we're doing in this section of functions.php. So we have custom dashboard widget. And the first thing that we need to do is add an action. And for those of you who don't know, an action basically allows you to run code at a certain point throughout the WordPress core. And this makes WordPress so extensible. And basically most plugins depend on the add action operations. So let's see how we can add one. And it's actually fairly simple. All we have to do is add action. And this action will take two properties. The first property is the is will be the name of the action to which the function is hooked. And this function is actually called WP underscore dashboard underscore setup. And the second parameter that this takes will be the name of the function that we wish to call. So let's create something like custom dashboard widget. Let's say contact details for now. And obviously you can make this shorter, but at least we know what this stands for. And let's copy this now. And obviously we need to create this function. Don't forget to close. To create the function, we simply put function and the function name that we just created. And this is where we'll be actually registering the widget. Uh, we will give the widget a name and we can add all sorts of stuff to it, but uh, I'm going to keep it simple. But uh, before we add, the widget to the dashboard from here. What I want to do is I want to make sure that only people that have the access to manage options on your WordPress website can actually access this widget. So let's say you can do all sorts of stuff with this, but let's say you might not want some users to be able to access this, uh, those options. Uh, maybe you want just the administrators to be able to change them. And uh, this is where you would normally write the code. And let me show you a very simple option. And this is, and uh, yeah, let's start writing it and you'll see what I mean. So we can do a simple if statement and we can use another function from WordPress called current user can. And current user can, then uh, we need to pass, let's put manage options. And as you can probably tell now, if the queue, what this does is if the current user can manage options, meaning they can go in the, uh, 
in the dashboard here and change some of the options from settings and so on, then they should be able to access the widget as well. That's not, you don't have to add this, but it's nice to know that you can do this and do specific user permissions. Now, the next thing we, that we need to do is we need to register that widget. And to do this, we will add WP add dashboard underscore widget. And then we need to pass the name of the action. And for this, uh, we can just put custom contact widget. Then we need to add the title of this widget. And for, for us, we can just add something like, we can just put something like contact details. And last but not least, we need to pass the name of the function that we wish to call again. So this one is gonna be something like, let's put custom underscore dashboard and then maybe contact. Uh, you can put contact details, but that should do the job. And let's save this. Now, obviously we need to create this function as well. Otherwise we will get an error. And let's do that in here. This is where our form is gonna go, or input, and we'll be able to see the values as well. So if I was to save this now and go back to the dashboard and if I refresh, you will see that we're now getting the contact details widget in here. And obviously at the moment it's empty. And of course, if you click on screen options, you can remove it or show it. So let's have a look at, first of all, how we can add a few options in here. So let's go back. We'll just put display form and First of all, I want to check whether this function exists or does not exist. So I don't want to run this function if it doesn't exist. And to do this, what we can do is if function exists, and because I'm putting the exclamation mark in here, it means that this function, if this function does not exist, then we obviously have to uh, tell it which function we are looking for, and is the custom dashboard contact function and then we need to wrap this function in the if statement and let's save this and see what we get so if we refresh everything seems to be working fine and if this function did not exist basically this will not run which is great now the next thing that uh, we need to do is create or layout for the form uh, to make it pretty. We don't have to, but it's nice to have it professionally looking. So let's do that. I'm going to create, um, first of all, because we'll be writing a lot of HTML, let's close PHP in here, and let's reopen PHP in here. Okay, so just like this. And now we can write all HTML in here. So let's start with a diff of a class of wrap and and WordPress has a lot of uh, classes and uh, that you can reuse. Uh, you can have a look at the documentation, but for now, just have a look at this. And uh, obviously we need to close this div. And let's now create the form. So basically the form will allow us to update and save the details for us. So let's do that next. And I will create a form in here. The method, the method of the form will be post because we'll be posting the details and they will be saved to our database, to the WordPress database. And the action that we want to use is options.php. Let's close the form. And inside here, obviously we're gonna have our fields and I might use a table as well just to make this look presentable. But the first thing that we need to do is add a nonce. 
And this is basically a number uh, used once to help protect URLs and forms from certain types of uh, misuse or mal malicious misuse or otherwise. And uh, let's do that quickly. So we can open PHP in here and put WP nonce nonce field and then we'll put uh, update options okay and then we need to close PHP and now we are ready to actually write our form I'm going to create a table and obviously and also you can add classes to the table if you like to make it look better Okay, so let's start with the table now. And uh, for the table, we're gonna have uh, two table rows. But let's start with the first one first. So open and close table row. And inside we're, here, we're gonna have a th, which is gonna be our heading. And uh, let's close the th as well. And basically we need to create a title for this. And let's say we want to add a phone number, phone number. And in for the th, we can do a few properties. We can do scope equals row. Then we can do width uh, of 120. We can align it. Not sure if this is necessary, but let's do it anyway. And uh, we can realign it to the top and so on. Save and see what we get okay we got the phone number now and the next thing that we need to add is the input so for this we're going to use a table data and let's close the td and inside here is where we're going to be adding the input so let's start with input and for the input we're going to have it as a type of text The name will be phone number for this example. Maybe we can give it a size of 255. And now the value. And basically we want to display the, when we save the form, we actually want to display the value as well. To do this, we can open PHP in here and echo the option and the option will obviously will be phone number and and then we can close php in here but i need to close that okay and then last but not least we need to, did we close the TD? No, we need to close the input, sorry. Okay, so let's save this and see what we get. As you can see, the input is a little bit uh, larger than expected. Uh, what we can do is potentially do a style in here, inline style. And for the inline style, we can do width of 100%. I've put equals in here, that's why. And let's refresh again. And as you can see now we have the phone number and let's add another one uh, underneath here. And now we can actually just copy all this and we can, yeah, let's copy all this and see what happens. And of course we're gonna have to change the name for this one and maybe we can put email address for this one. Let's copy this and put this into the get option. Save and let's see what we get. So let's refresh. And uh, I actually haven't changed the title of this. So let's go back and change it in here to email address. Save this and it's very good. Okay, so we obviously have the two inputs now, but we actually need to create a button for this form as well so we can save the changes or update the changes and to do this 
we can go underneath the table. Underneath the table, we're gonna have to do some, we're gonna actually have to add three inputs. And the, the first two inputs are actually going to be hidden. And these inputs, inputs are gonna help us to pass the data. So we won't see them. And the name will be action for this one. The value will be update. And the second input that we need is going to be again the type of hidden. The name will be set to page options this time. And the value will be set to equals the phone number. And with separated with a comma, email address. And then we need to close this input just like this. And last but not least, let's create the input, the button that is going to save the changes for us. And let's put this uh, input in a paragraph. So the form looks a little bit more presentable. And let's put the paragraph with a class submit. We might not need this. I think this is a global one. But let's do it anyway. And uh, let's add an input. And this input will be with the type of submit. Then the class will be a primary button primary. The value is going to be, uh, basically the value is something like save changes. But what I want to do is I want to use the underscore E function, which is basically used to lo um, for localization in WordPress teams. So what, what that means is if you change your language, if, you, if you're writing with one language, it's fine. You can simply write save, save changes here and that should work. But if you want your team to work with other languages, this is the way that you should do it. And I can demonstrate this in a second. Save changes. And obviously we need to close the PHP. And also you can have a look at this uh, in a little bit more in more detail if you like on WordPress on the WordPress documentation, but I'll show you how it works anyway. So let's save this first of all, and I think we're done with this for now. Refresh or dashboard, and as you can see, everything is looking good. So let's add a phone number of 01234567 and let's add an email address of hello at ready. The code the UK and let's see if the change if um, this works so I'm gonna press save and as you can see uh, I don't know if you managed to see but the page refreshed and if I refresh again you will see that all details are now here and they are actually stored in the database let me show you as you can see this save changes button is working quite well it's in English at the moment but if I was to go to settings in general, and let me open this in another tab, you can change the site language from here. And let's change it to something else. I'll change it to Bulgarian. And let's press save changes. And if I go back to the dashboard now, and refresh, you will see that the button is actually using the language that uh, WordPress is also using. So that's why we've done this function, e, e function here. Otherwise, you can simply just write save, save changes in your language and that should work too. Okay. So let me go back to English. I'll just put UK, save, 
and if we go back the button should change back to save changes and now that we have the widget you're probably wondering well how do we display this on our website and this is actually extremely easy uh, all you have to do is find the section of your website where you want to display it so let's have a look I actually don't know where I want to display it. let's say I want to display mine inside the header for some reason and um, I can literally I can literally display mine here. Let's see how this looks like. Let's see how this looks like first of all. So as you can see, this is where I write in the text. So I want to display maybe my phone number and my email in here. And the way to do that is actually really simple with this. All we have to do is we have to echo the get options and that's it. So let's open PHP and do echo get underscore options. And the first option that we want to get, if we go back, is the phone number in here. And let's close the PHP. So hopefully now we should see the phone number if we refresh. Fatal error. And this is because I've actually put options instead of option. So it's get option, save, refresh again. And as you can see, we have the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if I go to the dashboard and refresh this to something else, plus zero, I don't know, plus zero, zero, four, four, five, five, two, two. This is a random number. Save the changes. Go back to the website. You will see that the changes are saved. So let's bring now the email as well. Obviously, that doesn't look pretty, but that's not the aim of this tutorial. And we can literally copy the same thing in here. Maybe just like add the line between them or whatever. And uh, the next one we want to display is obviously the email address. And we can simply do that. Email address, save, go back. And hopefully we should now see the number and the email address. And of course, if you want to link your email address, you can wrap it in, um, in a link. And to do this, you can maybe do href equals mail to and then the the link will be in here and we'll just um, actually I need this we'll just close this mail to and and we can say email me or something like that let's save this and as you can see this I don't know if you can see it's a little bit hard but as you can see uh, on here at the bottom of the screen this is now a mail to link and if we click on it it should ask us do you want to open your email and of course we can actually bring the email in here just by using the same thing as here so we can literally copy this and bring the email as well just like that and now we have this as a link and the custom option is displayed and as I showed you earlier we can update it from here from hello to to uh, I don't know hey at rally.co.uk let's save this let's save and as you can see the changes are made and so on so you can use those custom uh, options to do all sorts of stuff such as uh, global phone numbers for your website maybe email address, maybe address of your office, um, maybe links to social media and so on. Basically, you can use it for anything. Uh, the inputs that I showed you in here, you can have as anything as well. You can have drop downs, you can have radio buttons, you can have check boxes and so on. But I just wanted to keep, keep this simple and that's everything from this tutorial. I hope you liked it. Uh, I hope you learned something. As always, if you like to see more tutorials like this, uh, let me know in the comments below what you think of this tutorial. If you like to see more tutorials like this, uh, again, let me know, smash the like button, and please subscribe to my channel if you um, want to see more WordPress tutorials. And that's it for now. I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.